Welcome to another round of that issue. This week saw liberals and conservatives hold two seats apiece in Monday's federal by-elections. With four seats up for grabs, early polls suggested a slump in liberal support. But despite this, they were able to hold on to seats in Winnipeg South Centre and Notre Dame de Grasse Westmount. For the Conservatives, they were able to hold on to Oxford and defeat PPC leader Maxime Bernier in Portage Lisgur. So what should we read into these results? What do they tell us about the current political landscape and, and how parties maybe should adapt? Let's bring everybody back. Chantel, Andrew, and Althea. Andrew, why don't you start us off? Should, should the Conservatives, um, let's start with the Conservatives because we talked about the Liberals more in the first block. Should the Conservatives be happy, relieved, concerned about how these by-elections played out? Uh, very concerned, and I would couple them with the uh, uh, Mississauga Lakeshore by-election last December. You see a similar pattern in all of them, where, or no, virtually all of them, where the conservative vote is down uh, in a by-election. Usually, opposition parties do well in by-elections. Uh, but it's particularly the, the pattern here, which is they're, on the one hand, bleeding support uh, to, the, to, to their left, to the center. Uh, why do I say that? Because they, the, the support for the People's Party went down, which you would think would benefit the Tories, and yet the Tories' overall vote also went down in three of the four ridings. So that suggests that they're losing more votes to the Liberals than they're gaining from the People's Party. And equally concerning, I think, to them is that the NDP vote is down quite sharply. Uh, now, there might be a lot of reasons for that, but one of them might well be if the, if, the, if the political strategy of the Liberals is to scare NDP voters into voting Liberal because the Conservatives are so awful and so mean and so nasty, if you've got a leader who seems to validate those fears, that's going to help those, uh, that, that strategy. So looking at these, as I say, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in by-elections after the, the government had taken a pounding for the last several months, yeah. for them not to improve their standing, let alone to see yeah. their standing go down, has got to be very concerning. So, so what do you say, Chantal, to people who say, well, it's just a by-election? Because that's certainly what conservatives would say when you put some of those points to them. <clears throat> yeah, of course. And uh, would they be saying that if they didn't prove their, their share of the vote? Uh, you... you I mean, Pierre Trudeau, Justin's father, held uh, 15 by-elections in 1978 and came out with two and lost half a dozen Yikes. to the Conservatives. And a year later, he was out of government. That is what happens to governments mm. who are at the end of their rope electorally. The share of the Liberal vote actually went up. What that tells me is it's not um, stop Liberals before you think you're so great. Mostly, Pierre Poilievre is convincing Liberals who are tired with their own party to come out and vote for their party. And as Andrew points out, he's also probably convincing new Democrat voters that they're better off voting for the stronger alternative to the Conservatives. I would call that a serious, serious uh, warning to the Conservatives and to Pierre Poilievre at this rate. Yeah. He is single-handedly fighting the mood for change uh, and convincing people that while they may be tired of Justin Trudeau, they have not seen an alternative that they feel they can vote for. And, and our conservatives, are Conservatives, are they concerned, Althea, from, from anyone that you're talking to or hearing from? When they go out of their way to tell you that by-elections don't matter, uh, yes, I would say they are concerned. There was an event uh, on the Hill this week because one of our colleagues from the National Post, John Iveson, is leaving. Um, and there were a lot of conservatives there who made the point that uh, by-elections don't matter and they're not at all concerned, uh, unprompted. So that, I think, tells you uh, what you need to know. Um, I agree with everything that was said. I think that the... The decision that was made to basically go scorched earth in Portage Lisgur, um, this is the riding where Maxine Bernier was running, where they had a candidate basically uh, attend rallies talking about how he believes that there's only two genders, that he would never have voted uh, on the bill that got unanimous consent under Aaron O'Toole's leadership on conversion therapy, banning conversion therapy, um, where the Conservative Party used their own social media accounts to fuel the conspiracy theory on the World Economic Forum. This is this story percolating around the internet that suggests that the World Economic Forum uh, is a world government and along with the Trudeau cabinet, they want to strip you of your private property. Uh, sometimes it's not just private property, it's they want to install microchips in your body or whatever. Um, that the party would use its officials account to uh, perpetuate this kind of theory. And at the end of the day, uh, no matter how many times they uh, plastered through mailings, pictures of Maxine Bernier walking in a pride parade suggesting how awful this was, mm -hmm. uh, the PPC still got 17% yeah. of the vote. So yeah. they wasted all this effort. Right. They hurt themselves. They gave the liberals ammunition for the next election campaign 
for what purpose? Yeah. Maxime Bernier says he's not going anywhere. That's they right. did not destroy him, and they have hurt themselves everywhere else in return. So, then, so, so, yeah, go ahead, Andrew. Well, and then meanwhile, in Winnipeg South Center, which is Nothing. a yeah. gettable riding. I'm not saying yeah. they were likely to win it. Yeah. Uh, but it's a riding that they have won in the past when they formed government. It's the, riding, it's the kind of riding they need to win. They went from an 18-point margin of defeat just two years ago to a 32-point margin of defeat. Uh, I would be really worried if I was concerned. Looking well, they didn't even try in that riding. Yeah, yeah, Chantel. Well, uh, if you, but if you don't try in ridings that you yeah. win when you win, where do you try? So is their and priorities. If the point is, uh, if the point is to, to kill the People's Party, I'm sure that that can be achieved since those people used to vote conservative, but that will not get you to government. So, 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 like, surely the strategy will change then, will it not? Given all the things that you're saying here, you would think that there would be a lesson and then they would apply the lesson and, and you know, uh, Chantal. I, I think those results, if the conservatives want to, are a gift to the conservatives because they send the party and its leader a message mm. that they can use to recast. There is enough time to do it yeah, if they sure. choose to read that message. I think it could be a bad gift to the liberals <laughs> because it could make them think, oh, well, yeah. we're okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. just keep going. Look, yeah. everything that happened all yeah. spring had no impact, and that yeah. would be really dangerous. So I've always believed that the party who did best on uh, those by-elections was probably getting the more dangerous result mm -hmm. as opposed to the party who got that message. I'm not saying that yeah. I know that Pierre yeah, Poilievre yeah. will take yeah. that message and no. work with yeah. it, yeah. but it's a useful one to get with so many months before another election. Andrew and Althea, both quickly. Yeah. The question is whether they will take that message. The people around Poilievre, like Poilievre, I think are very heavily invested in the idea that they know best, that the, we've tried the other way and it didn't work, that that's just mushy, mamby-pamby stuff. We've got to give people the raw meat and get out the base. And whether they're capable of shifting from that strategy, I think, is really an open question. Well, and, and they seem very, very focused on the People's Party. I, I will say that as well. This is evidence of that, too. Last word to you, Althea. Well, I wonder if it will embolden some of the progressive conservatives that are in caucus who feel like they have lost their voice. Now they have something to point to when they make their arguments in caucus. For more on that, I'm joined by Leger's Christian Bork and by Fred Delory, the managing partner at Delorier's Public Affairs. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, Christian, I'd like Pleasure. to start with you. What's your, your big take on last night's results? When we look at our national numbers over the past six to eight months, it's been largely sort of a stalemate with the two main parties within the margin of error of each other in sort of that eternal tie it seems now and they were 2-2 coming in last night they're 2-2 coming out of it uh which largely no surprises yesterday uh fred any surprises for you or you <laughs> what's your take yeah i would disagree i say there's a big surprise uh this is a, a an election where by elections where opposition parties should do much better than they would have in the past general. It's an opportunity to vote against the government without actually changing anything. There was a safe conservative seat uh, in Oxford where, you know, a United Conservative Party has not lost since 1949. We should have won that by over 40%, and we only won by 5%. Mm -hmm. That's a big, significant drop. Yeah, it, was a, it went from a 17-point gap in, in the last election to a 7-point gap last night. So, Christian, I, I wonder, do you read anything into those results? In the, the margins are interesting, right? In the seat the Conservative won, the margin of victory shrank. And in Winnipeg South Centre, sort of a seat the Conservatives have to win if they're going to form government, the Liberal margin grew. Should we overreact to that or not react to that? What's your, what's your sense? Well, by-elections are, are very special because of those, you know, unique stories that they tend to uh, that they tend to present to to us. You know, the the in-party uh, uh, fighting in Oxford over the nomination that certainly played a, a, a part in the result. Winnipeg South Centre with Ben Carr, Jim Carr's son running. How can you not <laughs> support him? Um, and also the 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 Leslie Bernier fight in Port Portage Lisker. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Conservatives needed to show their strength in that riding against Max Bernier, and they did. One poll on, on Mr. Bernier in the mid to high 20s, uh, he only delivered 17% of the vote yesterday. Uh, so that should be reassuring for the Conservatives that in a, that in a riding like that one, they're you know, more than likely to be able to reduce the number of people that voted for the PPP last time around. Uh, Fred, what's, what's your sense of that? I, I mean, the shrinking, you, you've highlighted the shrinking margin of victory in Oxford, but Winnipeg South Centre, is that a, 
Jim Carr, Ben Carr dynamic, or is that a warning sign for the uh, Conservatives, do you think? As a Conservative, I take it as a warning sign. Uh, as we all know with these elections, people aren't voting uh, for local candidates. We all like to pretend we vote for the local candidate. We don't. We vote for leaders and we vote for parties. Uh, what happened there in that sort of seat? Uh, that's a seat that we should be, uh, official opposition should be growing and trying to win in. This is a seat where you need, and we won it last time we were in government. Uh, so it's a type of seat you need to show if you're going to form government that you can take. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead, we went backwards. We went the other way. We went down in that seat. And that's a concern. So, Christian, help me. What, what, what conclusions can we draw on Pierre Polyev's appeal in some of these races? If, if the margin of victory for the Liberals grew in Winnipeg South Centre, if it got tighter in Oxford, and if you go back to Mississauga Lakeshore, which is another one of those important swing seats, the Liberal margin of victory grew there. Do we take any conclusions from that? Well, the, the, the hypothesis of Mr. Poliev being sort of too polarizing, not being able to convert soft liberals or disgruntled liberals over to the conservative side, there is something to that. If we look at what happened in Mississauga last time, as you mentioned it, adequately mentioned as well, and, and in Winnipeg South Centre, um, where I do see uh, uh, on the liberal side, this whole thing of, well, the best we can get is a minority. Mm -hmm because they're, they're not necessarily improving, doing better. Um, and again, largely our polls have been saying they're both within the margin of error of winning the next one. Winning a majority, that would be another story. Right. And so, Fred, we have this sort of static, polarized dynamic, right? If you look at uh, the work Christian's polling firm does, uh, which is very good, by the way, often the most accurate in the elections. Uh, it is, yeah. uh, but we, you, you, the part of the, the growth strategy for the Conservatives seems to be to, to squash Maxime Bernier the People's Party and try to win some of that in. Do you think they did enough last night in Portage Lisgar, where it was 65% to just 17%? Is that the sort of result they wanted and needed? It certainly is. They needed to drive it down as low as they possibly could to, uh, to remove the, the, the threat. Now, we know Maxime Bernier is already out today saying he's not going anywhere. He's going to run again. Mm -hmm. Last election, he had uh, vaccine mandates to run on. He didn't have that this time, and he still got 17%. Uh, he did go after some very hard right-wing conservative, social conservative issues that the Conservative Party played into uh, and campaigned against him on those issues, uh, which I think the Liberals are going to have a treasure trove of stuff now to use against us in the next election of what came out of that. So did we, uh, you know, did we accomplish what we needed there? I don't know. He's still living and breathing today politically. Uh, uh, and I think, you know, there's another by-election that was just called in Calgary Heritage a couple of days ago. Maybe we'll see his name on that. <laughs> yeah, he's making his way across Canada and running all the by-elections. But, Christian, I, I wonder what do we, we say about the People's Party of Canada right now? Were they just a moment in time uh, with that particular leader? 17% in, in, in portage Lisgar, as we say, but 1.3% uh, in Winnipeg South Centre, 3.3% uh, in Oxford, and right around 1% in the Montreal by-election. Is the People's Party of Canada over based on these results? Well, you, you would think it, it's maybe the, the nail in the coffin, right? But I think Mr. Bernie has shown he's impervious to nails. Um, <laughs> I, I think he will still you know, go at it. Uh, however, all the national polling from, from us and our competitors have them below that 3% threshold. Um, and he cannot win his own seat, uh, home seat in, in the Beauce region, cannot win um, in, 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 in a riding that should suit him well uh, in Portage Lisker. Uh, what else is there for the People's Party of Canada? Fred, a lot of the Liberals I was speaking with last night felt pretty good about this. Uh, they, they were very happy with the margin shrinking in Oxford, whatever was the, the cause there, and with the, with the safe win in, in Montreal and the big win in Winnipeg. Do you think they should be feeling good last night? Because, you know, there's still some cautionary tales there, it seems. Well, I could say as a conservative, I feel very frustrated, so I guess maybe they feel good. Uh, they just had maybe the roughest three months I've seen a government had. They've, got, they've taken a pounding on foreign interference, on the David Johnston thing, uh, constant issues with several cabinet ministers, uh, and then we have these by-elections, and in some writings they increase their vote, and we don't grow anywhere except for the one safe seat we had out in, uh, in Manitoba. So, you know... Uh, this is a weird uh, time where we're ending the session this week, and it's amazing that we pounded the Liberals so hard and they could come out with a win like this. Christian, what's your take on that? I mean, it, it has not been an easy couple of months uh, for the Trudeau government, yet uh, they held serve in the two ridings they held and then grew in one that they didn't. 
Yep. Well, I, I think it is he sort of a Teflon prime minister or is it because when disgruntled liberals look around, they're scared of the alternative? Right now, I think it's it's Mr. Poliev needs to become likable uh, to mainstream Canada. And, and I think so far it has not worked. So, Fred, this is one of the interesting things. In, in, in another poll we saw last week from Abacus Data, uh, there's a pretty substantial percentage of the population that wants change and a pretty substantial percentage of the population that is not comfortable with the options out there. That seems to be a bit on display last night in these results. It, it certainly is, and I think that's one of the biggest problems we had here. We, we see that the national numbers that show you know people are interested in voting for a party, but when they go into that ballot box, they're not so sure. Uh, Mr. Polyev has uh, numbers that I've never seen before in terms of negatives, particularly with women. I've never seen in all my years in campaigning uh, a politician have such a, a problem with one of the one of the two genders. So I don't know how that's uh, how he's going to be able to fix that. It's an immense challenge, and that needs to be their focus this summer. And I don't know how you I don't know how you make that issue go away. So Christian Bork, can you do that? Can you sh uh, can you fix your gender gap? issue in data while also changing kind of the hard right supporters of the People's Party of Canada. Yeah, and now both the Liberals and, and the Conservatives also have an age gap issue mm. uh, as well. It's tough for Mr. Poliev with, with younger voters as well. Um, I, I think it, when you look at the, the landscape in Canada, um, I would be out canvassing every single door in Ontario because that's really uh, where the next election will be will be held, um, and, and so far we've seen some gains for the Conservatives uh, in Ontario numbers, but it's not sufficient. I, I'd say it's battleground Ontario starting starting now. So, uh, Fred, just a couple of final thoughts. I, I mean, look, I've seen a lot of people saying by elections don't really mean anything. You can't draw conclusions from them. Uh, we're going to do that anyway. It's a political show, and you know it's what we do. But like, what when you look at the, this forecast to the federal election, uh, what lesson do we take from this, and what what do the pl players need to do? So, in my experience as a campaigner, I think uh, by elections are actually great indicators of the trends of what we're seeing because this is where people actually physically go in the ballot box and mark an X. Uh, not just a national poll. Uh, so they tell us a lot. And, you know, in the past we've seen, and, you know, in, in 2010 when we were in government, minority government, we went into Toronto into the riding of Vaughan and we won that. It was a huge upset. That was Fortress Liberal. Mm -hmm. We won that seat. And a year later, we won a massive majority government. In two, fast forward to 2013 and Brandon Suris, it was a by election where we used to win by massive uh, uh, numbers. And it shrunk drastically, and we barely held on to it. And there was a lot of red flags there that we didn't see. And two years later, we lost government. So by-elections are very good indicators of what's happening here, and political parties should be watching them very closely. So, Christian Bork, same uh, final question to you. I mean, what can we forecast forward with the, with the fresh data we got from these four by-elections last night? Well, the narrative from, from yesterday is basically if you're sitting on your surfboard uh, at the Conservative Party waiting for the wave, it's not coming yet. It, it, it's not there yet. Okay. All right. We're going to leave it there. I want to thank you very much, Christian Bork and Fred Delory. Thanks so much, gang. But what did the results mean for the official opposition? Let's dig deeper with Fred Delory, who managed the 2021 Conservative campaign under Aaron O'Toole and last year was executive chair of Patrick Brown's leadership campaign. He's now managing partner at Delory Public Affairs. Fred, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me on. Now, you write that uh, these results are a jarring wake-up call for the Conservative Party of Canada, even though when you take the bird's eye view... Uh, we still have the status quo in terms of the two liberal seats and the two right. conservative seats not changing hands. Right. Why do you think uh, there are some red flags here? Well, the biggest thing with by-elections are they are opportunities for the official opposition to grow. Uh, that is always the standard you look at. Uh, it is a way to vote uh, against the, the government without changing the government. There's no risk to it. Uh, so you tend to get uh, an increase in vote for, for the official opposition, whatever party that may be. And in this case, not just these four, but if you go back to the fall, there was another by-election in Mississauga Lakeshore. Of those five by-elections, four of them, we have gone down in support. Uh, we're going the wrong direction. Uh, if we want to be able to replace the Liberals, and that is what we want to do in the next general election, we have to show that we can actually grow our vote and not lose it. Okay, so how much should we read into by-election results, though? Because, you know, often we talk about there's not a lot of turnout. Leaders sometimes get involved in these campaigns. When you look at the numbers 
from last night. What stands out for you in these four writings? Yeah, well, I think by-elections are actually way more important and better indicators of trends than any of the broad national polls that you see. It actually tells us people are actually going to the ballot box and casting their ballots now. And what we're seeing again was a, a downturn in conservative vote, uh, which is problematic. The Liberals have had arguably the worst three months of any government I've seen in a long time. Uh, they took a real pounding in the House and it didn't show in the polls, though. They actually, their vote went up in a number of ridings. So, uh, you know, a more optimistic conservative might say, look, on our right flank, we reduced the PPC support in Portage Lisgar. We defeated Maxime Bernier again. And we only lost a few percentage points in Oxford, Ontario, despite all of the discord among conservatives over that nomination. What do you think about that? It's a tremendous risk to be fighting for that right-wing vote because what does it cost us in, the, in center Canada? Uh, we did go after it. Uh, the Conservatives ran a very aggressive campaign. They had their candidate talking about uh, conversion therapy. They attacked Max and Bernier for wearing a, a, a Pride Parade t-shirt. Uh, a lot of different things there that would not play well in other ridings, and I think the Liberals now have a treasure trove of stuff to attack us on as well. So there's a risk here. You can go for the right, and there's a lot of the Conservatives who think you need to go and eat that PPC vote back. It cost us four to five seats in the last election, so it did impact us. But how many seats does it impact us on the other side of it is going to be the question. Okay, and I want to talk about what the results looked like in cities last night, because your former leader, Aaron O'Toole, in leaving Parliament last week, you know, he left it with this warning uh, that the Conservatives, at the end of the day, they need to have more votes in those urban and suburban ridings. In 2021, you did make some gains, uh, but not enough to win a lot of seats in the GTA, for instance. So what stands out for you when you look at Winnipeg and Montreal? Yeah, well, our vote dropped. And again, if we want to replace the Liberals, we need to be increasing our vote, not dropping it. And this is a time when, you know, official opposition parties, governments shouldn't win by-elections, official opposition should. Uh, so to not even tighten it up, but to actually retreat and to do poorly is not a good indicator. Okay, so let's talk about the leader then, Pierre Polyev. Uh, how do you think his leadership style over the past nine months plays into the results that we saw last night? Uh, well, look, his numbers are not good right now. His personal numbers, his negatives are very high and they're increasing. They've doubled almost in the, or they, yeah, they've almost doubled in the past year as negatives by, based on national polling. Uh, he has a major problem with women voters. Uh, I've never seen uh, anyone, legitimate candidate for prime minister, have such a negative with one of the genders the, so, so poorly. Uh, so there's, they're going to have to figure that out, uh, how they can uh, improve that, because if you have that high of a negative, it's going to be very hard to get people to vote for you. However, though, I, you know, most recent polls at the party level, at least, do have the Conservatives under Mr. Polyev ahead of the Liberals. And, and you've argued that the Conservative message on inflation and affordability, uh, affordability, I should say, that it's resonating, that the party has been strong recently on, on foreign interference. So uh, why do you think there's this disparity then in terms of how the party is polling and what we're seeing yeah. on the leader? Yeah, I think that's... Um a lot of the party success is, a, I think, a lot of people parking their vote with us right now. They're not happy with the Liberals. We're seeing that. There's a lot of dissatisfaction with the government and people want change. So it's easy when you're doing a poll to, to park that vote with us. But like I said earlier, when you go to the ballot box to cast a ballot, it's a very different thing. And that's where the Conservatives need to, need to smooth the edges here. Uh, it's something we've been working on for a while in a number of elections. Until we do that, it'll be very hard to see. I was speaking to Conservatives in Ontario today about the... Uh, uh, Portage Lisker uh, candidate who won for the federal Tories, uh, Brandon Leslie, and that is a that is a problem. That the tactics used in that uh, by election bashy are going to haunt the, the the federal Tories in in Ontario, I think, and that's because they had this you know this one flyer that was some said it was homophobic because it showed a picture of Max Bernier uh, marching in a gay pride parade. And 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 this was to show that you know that he was he was secretly you know uh, LGBTQ uh, favorable, which is you know in, for most mainstream parties that's kind of where you want to be. So I, I was speaking to Tory today at Queens Park, who said that that tactic in 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 rural Manitoba could cost them ten seats in Ontario if if the Liberals pounce on it and say, look, these are the homophobic uh, rubes that you guys want to elect. I mean, this is. I do not understand. They obsess over Max Bernier, and then they, they lose sight of the important uh, ridings that they could win in Ontario. Remember, Polyev didn't even show up in Mississauga Lakeshore in a winnable by-election uh, six months ago uh, and, and that, that, and that the Liberals ended up winning. I mean, it's just, I don't get the strategy. It's like they forget about the most important I, province. 
I, I think the calculation is, Brian, if, if you know, I, I'm trying to figure it out as well, and I'd love to know your thoughts, is that securing the base and bringing back people who voted for the PPC under the Conservative tent to them is a winnable strategy versus, you know, quote unquote, moderating like Aaron O'Toole did in order to try and win suburban seats in Ontario and ultimately failing to do so. Like, I don't, I think that they feel that risks who they really are and they don't want to pivot the way that Aaron O'Toole did. And they feel like if they're able to secure the PPC base, then maybe they won't have to. I don't know if that's accurate or right, but I do sense that that's where they're coming from. It could definitely be where they're coming from, but I think uh, to pretty much everybody's point, there are some things that every party can kind of read into, try to spin, try to make it sound like it's positive or maybe negative for the other people. But but first off, it's just by-elections, and, and as you alluded to, uh, Vashi and, and Rob explained as well, uh, there are some local considerations in all these ridings as well. There's voter turnout that's always lower in by-elections. Uh, and of course, it's, it's maybe the mood towards the government towards the political figures at the moment. So I, I wouldn't read too much into it. But to your point, I, I definitely do think it's a way for us to get a sense of people's strategies and or maybe lack thereof. So so the Conservatives, yes, maybe they are thinking themselves that we can just get the People Party uh, people back to us. Uh, that may be enough. I, I'm not convinced. I don't think Belnier, is, as was said already, is going anywhere. Will his vote share remain the same? Probably not. I think a lot of people could that did vote for him could find themselves voting for Pierre Poitiers. So I, I think that at the at the end of the day, that strategy uh, is not one that they should be focused on. And they should indeed be thinking about how they're going to win seats in Ontario and, uh, and, and in urban areas more specifically. Uh, and I would say that the, the biggest probably winner is probably the Liberals. And, and to me, one of the things that isn't really talked about is it's just that they seem to have a good organization. All the by-elections seem to be going pretty well for them uh, in terms of vote share, in terms of the seats that they should be holding. So to me, that points to, yeah, they can say it's because people are supporting the government. But when you look at the macro numbers, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, it may be because they're well organized. And I think the big loser is, is, is the Conservatives because I do believe that the, the as, it, as Rob pointed out, I do believe the fact that they put some stuff out that may be used in the general election to try to paint Polyev and the Conservatives as too far right wing was the biggest danger for all the political parties in these by-elections.